And so come, uh, can we pray together? Come, let's pray. Oh, Father, we thank you so much. We know you love us. You love us in eternity. You love us today. You love us like never before. So we thank you so much, Lord. We can call you Abba Father. We can entrust all our cares, all our weaknesses to you, and you understand. Father, even sometimes we come before you, we're lacking in faith. But Lord, you don't, you don't put short your blessings just because of our faith, short of faith, Lord. You continue to show us grace. You continue to uplift us. And you want us to know, Lord, you love us regardless of our condition, of the level of our faith, Lord. You still love us. Yes. And you still have the best for us. Yes. Lord, we thank you so much. Father, we pray for the church. Your church needs to know, needs to know you, needs to know how you see them, how you love them, how you value them. Father, we are your church. We are the people, we come here, we gather for a definite reason. Because we know we face you, when we face you, the devil cannot frighten us. And he cannot frighten us because he has no more authority under the cross of Jesus Christ. So we thank you all the more, Lord. Father, you raise up this church, and Lord, you bless this meeting today, Lord. Let us know your promise in full. Let us not know it half-heartedly. Let us embrace it with our loving spirit, joyous spirit. Father, thank you so much. We want to give you all the praise and glory in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. All come ready. <laughs> we have a new sister here. Can we know her? Ivy. Ivy. Hey, hi. Let's welcome her. Put our hands together. Okay. So we are on our second, second lessons about prayer. Uh, I cannot stress enough about the importance of prayer. And what is prayer all about? It is our living conversation with God. Okay? When we talk about living, it means active, powerful. And it is a two-way communication, living conversation with God. So do you converse with God? You see, I tell you, you must get this clear. You cannot love a God where you cannot communicate with, right? You cannot say, I love God. I love you, I worship you, but you don't like prayer. The same thing, it's just like, you cannot love a spouse you cannot communicate with, right? So God demands that communication. But not only demand it, God wants to build up that communication with you for that relationship, right? So you can spend your whole life, I can tell you, you spend your whole life, you read the Bible, you attend seminary, <laughs> wherever you know you go to church accum accumulate all your knowledge about God but if you don't like prayer if you don't like prayer you don't enjoy your prayer life your Christian living is in vain so I want every one of you to really seriously put this in your thought Lord I want to learn this I want to learn about prayer but it's not the richer kind of prayer it's not the kind where you say pray as it works okay you pray to get more favor you see people always think like that you see oh thumbs up pray Kneel down, pray. Close your eyes, pray. Open your mouth, pray. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's a living conversation between your heart and the Spirit of God. You see, right there. Okay, you get this right? So I want to check again whether you understand my message yesterday. I check again. How do you know if your prayers fail? <laughs> let's, let's put it a bit negatively. How do you know when you have failed in your prayer? How do you know? Simple. Yesterday I asked, how do you know whether you have succeed, succeeded in your prayer? Today I asked, how do you know whether you fail? How? You don't feel peaceful right here in your heart after prayer. You don't get uplifted here in your heart. You don't see your situations differently. In fact, sometimes your situation doesn't change immediately. But when you see everything all together differently with a believing heart, that situation becomes a good situation. Amen? You see, this is all about prayer. God wants to touch you right in your heart. Your mind, your heart, your spirit as a whole. You see? So if you have to pray, you're still brooding over your problems, you know, still frustrated, you know. Meaning, you know, you haven't prayed enough, or rather, I would say you haven't prayed deep enough, right? 
So uh, some people say, I know God loved me. I know God loved me, Pastor Vincent, but I just don't want to pray. I just don't feel like praying. <laughs> Do you have that kind of thought, that kind of feeling before? Oh, so what happens? Oh, you don't feel like praying. I know God loved me, but I just don't want to pray. Then God will come and talk to you. <laughs> God will keep talking to you. You understand that? God is not a God who says, uh, No, you don't pray. Okay, I cane you. I discipline you. No. Because every time a child of God doesn't want to pray, there's a reason. And God knows. Because you're upset over something, you're angry, you're still feeling sore over something, someone, uh, or you don't know His will, you cannot see, you have no confidence that He will answer your prayer. A lot of reasons, you see? Reasons and reasons why you don't pray. But God is trying to tell you, you as my son, as my daughter, will definitely want to pray. And each time you don't feel like praying, you don't reproach yourself. I will come and give you little surprises. <laughs> and God is like that. I can tell you that. God gives surprises. Surprises to you. Don't feel like praying, sulking, you know, grumpy, groaning and all. You see, God come, little surprises. A miracle happen. Sometimes like that happen. You see, a lot of times if you are living, really living a really active Christian life, you will know God is like that. God gave little surprises. God created something to amaze you, to wake you up actually, to wake you up. Make things a bit exciting for you sometimes. But you don't take it as, oh, discipline. God is disciplining me. I mean, sometimes God, God comes to you with a little bit of problems, you see. Uh, God is trying to say, you may don't feel like praying, but I will come and talk to you. I will come and touch out you. Hey, hey, hey. I'm here. I'm here, you know. I'm right here. You see, God is like that. God wants you to know, I'm right here. Ah, see, see, see. Huh? I'm still concerned. I'm not unsympathetic towards your problem. You see, God is like that. So he creates some situation, some surprises, some excitement, you know, in your life. And now, I'm here. You see? You saw it? Now you saw it? Okay, come. You saw it already? Come, let's go together. So let's go together, then you see your problems resolved. You see? God can resolve your problem in a minute. No problem. I know all of you have some problem, more or less, you know. Some have problem, you know, within them. Always feel sore over something. You know? Some have problems with their families, with their career, with finances, all kinds of problems, or with children, with marriages, you know. God can resolve them very quickly, in a minute, in fact. And God wants to resolve them. I want to give you the assurance, God wants to resolve them. Because God will not want you to remain in a state of despair and despawn, you know. God is not such a God. God is not slow in delivering His answers, you see. But you see, sometimes God delay a bit, you see. God delay. But you feel delay. You feel delay because you cannot see God. But to God, God is very proactive. God is very proactive. Hey, hey, I'm here. You see, I'm here. So the surprises come, uh, something excitement come, you know, I'm here. So once you see him, that's it. Okay, come, now we can go together. So when I answer you, you see. When I solve your problem, you know, that's my love. That's my deliverance. You see, God is like that. So I don't want all of you to know the wrong way about God, you see. So many people have been driven away from God. Sheep, I'm, I'm talking about sheep of God. There are really people who want to love the Lord, who want to go to church, but they are prevented from doing so because why? Because of the Christian around them, giving them the wrong teaching, the wrong feeling, you know. The families, you know, on the fa their own family people go to church but oppress them, you see. That's why they give up, you see. Because from you, they understand God. So today, I give you this message, prayer and promise. You heal yourself. Once you are healed, your loved ones will be healed. Because your heart is for them, you see. Because you want them to be good. But because you want them to be good, you don't know the promise, you neck them, right? You try to, you despise them with your words, you know? You try to poke them with your words, right? Because you want them to get up, to be motivated, so you poke them. But it goes the other way, you see? Wrong way. I tell you, God comes and melts our heart. God give us love so that we can love. God give us grace so that we want to live in grace, right? Right? Amen? So you see, sometimes when you cannot help it, you cannot do anything, you know, you come to church, you know, so despair, you come in, eh, strange, huh? how come when you start singing, listen to the message, the problem just go, you see? And God is giving you surprises like that. 
there. Now I'm telling you, you're not numb. You know, some brothers and sisters always say, Pastor, I'm numb. I'm numb already. Whatever message you say, I cannot be convicted. Whatever hymns I've sang, no feeling. <laughs> you are not numb. You say, you are not numb. You just didn't hear the right words, right voice from God. Because God understands your situation. God understands your feeling. But you always think that God is somewhere else or demanding your obedience. Then, you see, when God is up there demanding you and you cannot help it, you're still helpless, you give up. Then as this goes on and on, numb. Numb already, okay? I just let myself live like that. Okay, sin, okay? I do one sin or so, I commit ten sins or so the same. Commit thousand sins or so the same. So just live in sin. Better still, I'm happier like that. You see, at least my flesh gets satisfied. <laughs> you got what I mean? And that's the problem of Christian. It's a pathetic state of Christian. Why? It's not because they don't want to love God. They misunderstood God's goodness. All right. Today, you know the promise. I want you to know the promise of God. Satan, huh? I tell you, Jesus died on the cross. Bear every burden, every condemnation for you guys. Christian has no more problem because every time you pray, the angels work. But Christian, but you see, Satan knows this. He cannot do anything about this. So he come and give you what? He give you a wrong mindset. You see, your problem is because you have a wrong mindset. Satan will tell you, hey, God don't answer prayer. <laughs> God will not answer your prayer. Pray also no use. You see, pray also no use. Because God is going to be unsympathetic towards you because you are still living in your sin, disobedient. Ah, you don't know His will. You pray, you see? Nothing happened. So God, no, you see, so Satan, when he tells you this kind of thing, uh, he just want to implant one mindset into you. Pray also no use. You see, how many times you think like that? Pray also no use. But Jesus wants to reverse that. You see, Jesus, Jesus come to reverse that. And I want to assure you that God answers every prayer. No matter how weakly you pray. Okay, this is a promise of God. So you want to learn about this today. And now, today, before I start, I'm going to deal with another issue. Okay, I've really resolved that God answers every prayer. Right? That's a promise. And But how He answers, you've got to learn about it today. Now, I have another kind of believers who come and tell me. Now, Pastor, I know, I know. God answers every prayer. And I pray. I assure you, I guarantee you, I pray. Every morning. I pray for my children, my husband, my wife. And I pray. But I cannot hear. I'm not like you, Pastor Vincent. You pray, you hear, you receive. So easy. I cannot hear. It's not as if I don't want to pray. But I cannot hear. I pray, in fact. But I still cannot hear. I use my willpower. Some people use their willpower to pray and pray, you know. But they never hear God. And it's um, very discouraging here when you cannot see how God uplifts you or reveals to you. But what is the reason? I'm going to resolve this. What is the reason why you cannot hear God speaking to you through prayer? When in fact, you've been learning how to pray for your whole lives. Because you are praying not in accordance to the spiritual principle of God. So prayer Listen up. Not according to the spiritual principle. Yesterday, I keep talking about this. And I'm going to dwell on this for some time today. Okay, it's my first point. You don't pray according to the spiritual principle as determined by God. That's why you use your mind, you use your willpower to pray, but you don't hear. Okay, listen up. This is the problem of a lot of believers. What do you mean by not according to spiritual principle? Your prayer is not on the basis of truth. You see, not on the basis of truth. You got what I mean? When you pray, you have your own belief. You have your own kind of feeling, own sets of values. You have your own mindset. That is not accordance to the truth of God. You see? Let me give you an example. You say, Lord, I pray for favor. Many Christians like to pray for favor. Lord, give me favor. 
But you don't believe that you are already favored fully in Christ Jesus. You see, you cannot say, I don't believe I'm fully favored. Really? Conditional or unconditional? I don't know, maybe conditionally. Then you ask for favor. Then you won't see the favor. You see? You get what I'm trying to say? You ask for a good job. You ask for a good spouse because you need. You see, God knows you need. You see, God knows you need this thing and He wants to bless you more than that. But the thing is, you don't believe that He has the best for you. You don't believe that He's more worried for you, for these things, you see. These are things that are vital for your, for your future, you see. God doesn't play with your future. Your father doesn't play with your future. He doesn't starve you. He doesn't give you a lousy spouse just because you don't obey, you see. But you don't believe that fully. You always look within yourself and see. I'm unmotivated, you know. I'm always groaning, complaining, grumbling to God, grumbling against people. You see, I don't think so. Now, you ask for favor. You know you have a need. You ask for that need. But you don't believe, you don't believe that you are already favored and blessed in Christ Jesus. You see, you don't hold on to the cross. But you want the blessings outside the cross. You see? That's why you cannot see it. You cannot see it. That's a problem. That's why Pastor Vincent always come and talk about mindset thing. When I talk about spirit, I talk about this truth thing. You make sure your spirit is always in conjunction to, to the truth. Even, even you want to pray, really, to resolve your problem, you want to pray for favors, you hold on to the absolute favor first. Make sure, make sure your mindset must not be conditional. You see, God, I always realize that, you see, God always want me to have a powerful ministry. I mean, God, when God called me to be a pastor, God doesn't call me to fail, you see. I call you to preach my word. I call you to reign. I call you to influence people, right? You see, but you see, it's right. I mean, I want you to know that Christ, Christ Life Church or so. God called you all to impact Penang. This is not something proud, you see, and all. It's not about that. Christians should impact people. You mean you want to stay within yourself, you know, look within yourself and then stay like that and over here and hey, don't let people know, no. Cannot be, right? You want your blessings to flow. God always wanted me to have a powerful ministry. And today we have people from uh, like US, China, New Zealand listening to our message every day. But the thing, but the thing is, but the thing is, God want me to have this anointing, want to build this anointing in me through a small church. You know what I mean? God give me the anointing through the tedious and shepherding of a small church in Singapore. See, that, that's how I received the anointing. See, God, God built you up, built you up to be a good parent. Why? Through your problematic children. <laughs> you see? God shaped your character. How? Because someone beside you, they have a problem. So you cannot change them, so you change yourself. You see? But you must have a favored mindset. You must hold on to the truth. God is always with you. He always answers you. Oh, these are truth. You see? He always gives you the best. He cannot be you. Pray something. Hey, God don't answer this way. No, there must be a better way. You see? Your mindset must be on the basis of truth. Then you can hear God. You see, this is a spiritual principle. I tell you, the angels uh, work according to this. That's why I say even by the, the reaction of your heart and mind, you know the angels have work. You saw that? Um, and you know you always worry about your studies, worry about your future. You always get to see things that are not so happy. <laughs> You're not so happy about. You got know what I mean? Because these are spiritual principles. When a person lives victoriously in his heart and mind, believing mind, believing heart, on the truth, you know, he pray according to the truth, he sees things according to the truth, these things happen, you see? Blessings come. And then, you see, some other prayers that are not according to the spiritual principle, what are they? They are one-way communication. Uh, Christians like to do that. You see, why you do one-way communication? Why? You mean you enjoy that? No, you only do it to appease your conscience. You get what I mean? That's why repetitive prayers, you pray again and babbling like pagans, like what Jesus said, and you think you will be heard because of your many words, you see? And I tell you, when you pray, when you don't receive the spirit conviction during prayers, you know that prayer, God will answer, but you won't see the answer. You get what I'm trying to say? One way. 
one way. You don't even know what God is doing after that. You don't even bother, okay, whether I, how He's going to answer your prayer, you don't even bother to find out, you see? That's the thing, one way communication. It's very simple to understand. You see, you just imagine, you're talking to your father, whatever, physical, your earthly father. One way only, one way. So the father also talk to you one way, you also talk to him one way. <laughs> Every one way, no communication, you don't understand him, he don't understand you. That's the end, you see? It's always like that, one way communication. And now, another thing is self-centered prayer. Self-centered prayer. Everything you pray, pray for what? Pray for myself. Pray for me, for I, you see? Aku, saya, you know, all oh, my, you see? My needs, my success, my finance, you know, in my church, everything is mine. And you keep praying like that, very slowly you will feel numb. Subsequently you will feel numb. Why? Because when God created you, God created you perfect already. Even though you are not, you are imperfect, you are already perfect in Christ Jesus. So God gives you the kingdom. The whole of His kingdom is yours. You will reign together with Christ in the kingdom, right? So, you should have a kingdom mindset. Kingdom-centered prayer. But you pray for self-mindset. You know, it's like this, you know. When you keep things for yourself, keep praying for yourself. I don't know why. Last time I used to do that, I get unhappy. You see? I don't have to tell you. God doesn't have to tell you. Hey, you love your brother, huh? You make sure you love your brethren. God didn't have to tell you all this. When you hate your brethren, or you have grievances against your family members, you yourself don't feel good. You see, you don't feel good because why? You are created to give blessings, you see. That's why your heart will tell you that. Your heart will tell you that. So don't go into prayer for your need. Listen up. Don't go into prayer for your need. Go into prayer for Him. For Him. You go into prayer because you want to converse with Him. With Him, you see. In the healer, in the healer, God is a healer. There is always healing. So I look to the healer. In the provider, there is always a provision. You see? It's like that. So, not self, even. God-centered, in fact. I'm not telling you to all oh, pray for kingdom, you know, whatever, that kind of thing. Not, not that, you see. Who, who reigns in the kingdom? God himself. So you look to him. Later I will tell, to, tell you how. Look to him as your healer. Look to him as your provider. Find satisfaction in him. Satisfaction in his presence. And you know, those things, are, answers will come. You see, this is the thing you have to learn. But you see, uh, the angels know. You see, the angels are always in one heart with God. They are servants of God. Created to serve who? Serve you. They are your servants, you know. So they are mobilized when you pray according to the spiritual principle. The moment uh, your heart and mind lifted with the promise of God. Lifted as, when you think of God as your healer. Lifted when you see God as your provider. You see the angels move. Angels bring everything. Everything. Money, uh, whatever. Uh, health, love. Whatever. Angels will bring such things, you see. Even you look for a job, you see. My guys always look for a job. I always tell them, you look and look and look, no job. I say, the job will come and find you when the angels start working. <laughs> see? Yeah, really. So when they, restore, when they have the restoration in their heart, the jobs come and find them, you see. And it's strange. Why do things happen, you see? See, God is telling us spiritual principle. You can be running around now to solve your problem. Thinking, worrying day and night. If it doesn't solve, it's time to calm down and see whether your heart and mind matches the spiritual principle. That is the whole idea. Okay, and that, that's why God says, uh, actually you, you children of God, you don't have to pray for what you need because God knows what you need before you even ask Him. You don't even have to ask. Lord, sometimes you know I have a need. My first reaction is, Lord, you know better than me. You know better than me. You're the one who create my desires. Right? Some people say, oh, desire, cannot, cannot think of this. Cannot, cannot. You start to like some, some people, oh, cannot, cannot. I'm still young, cannot. <laughs> uh, cannot, must curb my desire, you know. Um, pastor say, cannot, no, non-Christian, cannot, non-Christian, don't see, cannot. <laughs> how? <laughs> I have the liking how. You see, God created that desire. God knows what you need. 
Oh, don't look at money. Money, no. root of all evil, money. <laughs> so, in that. So, how? Oppressive Christian living. You cannot feel the spirit in your desire. In fact, you are fearful of your desire. That's why you cannot smile, you cannot cry, you cannot laugh. You see, all those things, why? Christian, before this, they go to church, they go to church already, they cannot smile. Before they go to church, they can smile. <laughs> you see? Strange, you see? God knows what you need before you even ask from Him. You saw that? That's why when you pray, you must know. You must differentiate. Differentiate, huh? What? You already have. Already have. You see, you already have received. And what you will receive. Uh, these two things you have to make sure you can differentiate. What you already have. You already have your identity as a child of God. You already have His favor. You already have God. He's your provider. So He's your provision. But what you will have is the money that comes, the health that comes, you know, the success that comes. You see? These are the things that come after that. But you have to differentiate. You've got to differentiate. When you pray first, uh, you don't say, Lord, until you give me, uh, then I can be happy. Uh. I don't see tomorrow. I wake up, I still don't see. I'm not going to be happy. You know? <laughs> so your perspective mindset is on the thing, the tangible thing, you see? And so you never see God. Because God is not in this thing. God is invisible. It, why, why, why must God be invisible? Can I ask you? Do you know the spiritual principle why God must be invisible? Because God comes in the form of money. Uh, only money, like that. God becomes money. That's why you have money, God. <laughs> but God cannot come in the form of money. It's, God must be invisible, meaning He fills everything in the whole universe. You, your eyes cannot see everything at one go. Uh, so God make it invisible. <laughs> you get what I mean? Everything, health, finance, success, everything, you see? So God became invisible to tell you that I feel everything, even in you, outside you. Even every cell in you. People are scared of cancer, right? Why? I tell you, God lives in that cell, you know? You see? God lives in the smallest part. Even your cell, you cannot even see it, you see? And the biggest part in this whole universe, which is this universe, you cannot even see it. That's why God became invisible. For you, you see? You understand now, the spiritual realm, the spiritual principle is like, you only have this naked eye, you know, you see, wow, ten dollar, wow, money face happy, you know? <laughs> this one, how do, how do you experience God like that? You saw that? Oh, the doctors say, you know, oh, cancer, no more cancer, say, oh, happy, oh, thank God, thank God, no? Oh, oh tumor, I saw it, oh, then, start to worry already, you see? That's why your, your emotions are controlled by what? Controlled by the things you see. Controlled by the doctor's words. <laughs> you see, you're scared of that. God knows. You always understand what you already have and what you will have. You already have the invisible God with you. That glorious identity. Those are unseen blessings, but infinite blessings. See, when you enjoy that in prayer, nothing moves you. You see? You see, God is very clear with His word. Huh? Oh, I want you to know all these things, you see. And careful, no. Don't go into those kind of prayer which you know you will eventually fail. Okay? And what other kind of prayer is a, is, is a failure? When you pray for others to hear. Oh. God knows that when you pray for others to hear only. And your spirit is not focused on Him. God knows that. You see? When you don't face God, you don't see God facing you. It's the same thing. You see, in church, um, we are leaders, elders, deacons. People who have been in church for some time, they learn to pray. They learn to form sentences. Dynamic sentences. Big words, huge words. <laughs> But after that, you look at them, the way they live, huh? Wow, wow. <laughs> they said, people, really or not? No joke, man. We pray like that, they live like this. <laughs> you know? I tell you. That's why God says, don't be a hypocrite. But the, the problem is, some people don't even realize they are hypocrites. Because they are used to it already. Used to it. That's so why be careful, huh? you people who grow up in church, you know? You grow up in church, you don't know the Holy Spirit. 
You grow up in church, learn all those things, all those hymns, all those sentences. I tell you, you better demolish everything and come back to God and face Him with your spirit. I say every time Pastor Vincent pray, every word I mean it. That's why when you say Amen, you feel it right here in your heart. You can see it in conjunction with me. You can know when you say Amen, yeah, the blessings you receive it in your spirit. You see, because I pray with my spirit, you see. So learn this. Every word you speak forth to God, you speak forth in spirit, healing will come. Healing comes like that. When you meet God, oh, your grievances go. Your soreness go. You see, when you pour out your grievances to God, when even you pour out your anger to God, God, I'm angry. <laughs> God says, I'm angry too. <laughs> right? Then you are touched. Yes, you saw God on your side. Yes, this is the thing. God wants you to face Him. You don't pray for others to hear. You don't pray, you don't pray because oh, this is the standard in praying. You know what I mean? And I can tell you, huh? listen up. You listen up. When you pray, you know, these things are hypocrisy in the church. I'm not saying I, I don't have those things. I might have, maybe I didn't realize, but I continue to find those things out and get rid of when you don't get rid of your hypocrisy, you know, who will know? Who can detect it? Your pastor won't detect, no? Who detect? Your son, your, your daughter. Your children live with you. You cannot escape their eyes. Ah, father, go to church huh? like that, huh? say that, come back only, tell me this kind of thing. <laughs> you know, throw poison words at me. Then he go to church. Hey, welcome. Hi, brethren. Hallelujah, man. Praise God. <laughs> yeah. Yes, there's grace. No condemnation. Come back, only condemn me. <laughs> this is the thing. Your children know. That's why when they grow up, they don't listen to you. <laughs> they don't listen for a reason. A pastor, how? My children, they've grown up. I've been a hypocrisy all my life. Now you know it. You repent before God, Lord, I want to live right before you from today onwards. And then you change starting from today. Your children, wow, amazing. And they, you'll give glory to Jesus. You see? So there's always a turning point in Jesus Christ. There's always a turning point. No matter how bad you have failed before. Amen? Amen. So there's always hope, huh? <laughs> I come to give you hope. And I don't just come to give you This is really the real thing. Jesus come to give us hope. And then... You see? And what other things, you see? What other problems? Of course, I can list down a thousand of problems, a thousand of prayers that are not in, in accordance to the spiritual principle. You keep on finding those things out. You will know it in your heart, you know? You're not edified here. You're not uplifted here in your heart and in your spirit. You will know. But I just list down six. Six is a bad number one. <laughs> six. So I, I just use six, you know? Um, what other things? What other things, okay? When you don't pray, what... How do you know you don't pray according to a spiritual principle? When you have no anticipation. In Chinese, with anticipation, anticipation is uh, pan wang, right? Anticip when you have no anticipation and assurance uh, in receiving answers. In receiving answers. Oh, you see? Why didn't you have anticipation? Because your spirit tells you that you are talking to the air. You are talking to yourself, you see? Now you see, um, when you pray, when you, even you intercede for someone, say, even when you pray for your physical need, you make sure you, make sure you pray, you see, huh? when you pray, pray in your spirit. When you're convicted right here in your heart, after prayer, you will have a kind of anticipation, yes, the answer will come. The job will come. The food will come. The finance will come. No, you will have this anticipation. Have you realized, have you experienced this before? I'll give you an example. You know George Miller? He's the father of the orphan. Thousands, thousands of orphans. George Miller, y'all don't know. Uh. No, uh, y'all know. He's well known for what? He's well known for prayer. And mind you, short prayer. The co-workers always come to him and say, Hey, Pastor George, no food ready. Tomorrow how? We have thousands of orphans under us. He said, hold on, hold on. Huh. I think it's time to pray. <laughs> so we've got to look for food. No, no, no. Let's pray first. Let's pray. Then the, the, the co-workers thought, oh, he's going to give a very dynamic prayer and say, oh, George Miller just say what? Lord, 
We have no more food. But you know. So we look to you, our provider. Amen. Then get up. 10 seconds. Huh? Cool, that's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And they go, the food came the next day. You see? Short prayer. Very simple. But when he prayed that, Lord, we have no more food. But you know better than us. We look to you, our provider. In your spirit. You're convicted right here in your heart. You get up, happy. Because I know it will come. I don't know when, but it will come. Definitely. We won't stop. And he went out and then come back. The food came. You see, so many of his testimonies are like that. You see, you have to learn those prayers, you see. The Holy Spirit prayer. It's like that. Hmm. You go and use your bombastic words and pray and all. You see, at the end of it, you see nothing happens. I'm not saying you don't pray with those words. Lah. I mean, you must mean it, you see. You must mean it. You must, you, know, you must be convicted right here. Of course, words are important. God created language words for us. So when you use the appropriate, the relevant words and pray, and you give your heart, give your soul to God, you know, you know this is a spiritual act of worship. And you, you do it with your spirit. God is pleased with that. All right? So you learn, learn this one. Okay? Anticipate the Lord's provision. Mm. Even I tell you, you girls learn, huh? when you pray for your exams, don't just pray. I don't know whether you answer. No, I pray. I know. You care for this exam. You care for my future more than me. And I'm going to study now. I give my best to you. Lord, you take responsibility. And you pray in your spirit, 10 seconds like that. You study and then you feel the uh, serenity here. And then you go to the exam hall. You just feel, you, just, you can feel the angels, the grace of the Lord all around you. And you start doing your papers and all, you know. I was going to fail my papers during my A-levels, you know. I just pray, cry to the Lord, Lord, you know. I have no future. You are my future. <laughs> because I've been having F all my life, you know. <laughs> so, so I go. <laughs> and then the rain comes. Wow, Lord, you know, I love rain. I used to, I always love rain, you know. That's why I came, the rain came. <laughs> I don't know why. I always feel the romance of God when it rains, you see. Uh. I always feel the cleansing of God when it rains. I don't know why, because this is my experience since young, you know. Every time when rain comes, I feel, hey, good things happen. <laughs> so I went in, wow, I got a C. <laughs> From F. Hallelujah, man. <laughs> yeah. Pastor Vincent cannot study well. You believe or not? <laughs> uh, that's why it has to be spirit driven, no? <laughs> You study well already, huh? I don't know these things. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Joking only. You must study well and know these things. <laughs> okay. Come, let's go. Let's go to the word. Uh, uh, let's go to John. Uh, John chapter 14. Okay, this is all about the Holy Spirit now. Uh, so guys, huh? I'm going to teach you the interaction between your heart and the Spirit of God. The spiritual man knows all things, okay? Man of prayer knows all things. Okay, when you say spiritual man, it's a man of prayer. You don't pray, you can deliver a good sermon. Sorry, you're not spiritual man. You cannot judge things rightly. Chapter 14, come. John chapter 14. And Jesus over here, he knows he's going to be nailed on the cross very soon. Uh, so this is the day before, in fact. He was nailed on the cross and he gave this message to his disciples and to give them hope you see and these are all promises of God these are all promises chapter 14 book of John verse 1 do not let your hearts be troubled trust in God trust also in me in my father's house are many rooms if it were not so I would have told you I'm going there to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. You see? How do you know the way? What way? <laughs> Did Jesus, is Jesus going to leave? Is Jesus going to leave? No. Jesus is only going to become invisible. Ah, you have to know it this way. He's only going to become invisible. And when you know the Holy Spirit, you know the way. Because you know Jesus inside your heart talking to you. You see? 
That's why Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? <laughs> Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So what's Jesus? I'm the way, the truth and the life. I come as a promise. I come with the promise and the promise of the Holy Spirit will guide you in everything, teach you in everything, deliver you out of every tribulation. You see, this is the thing. So I am the way. Now, my promise is the way, the truth, and the life. You can read it like that also, you see? Um, so if you don't have a promise mindset, a covenant, or we can say covenant, you don't have a covenant mindset, you cannot see, you pray like that. No covenant mindset, you will pray like that, not according to the spiritual principle. That's why you're always looking at things. Oh, how do we know the way? Huh? Which way? Which road? Huh? Cannot see, no? Uh, where the money? Cannot see. No. No. The Holy Spirit in you. Even when you pray, you can anticipate the prayer will be answered. Even more than what you anticipate. Amen? You see, oh, where were I? And Jesus answered, uh, yeah. And Philip said, you see, they don't understand. They're also always looking at the physical things. Lord, show us the Father and there will be enough for us. Let us have a glimpse. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even I have been among you such a long time. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Because I am the flesh of the Father. You see? I come and show you the loving Father, the righteous Father, the peaceful Father. You see? I show you the abundant Father. You see? That's why I never lack. So wherever I go, the sick came up. You see? The blind restored their sight. You see? Whoever, don't you see that? You're afraid of no bread, right? I show you five loaves, two bread, and then after that, how many baskets? Twelve baskets. Abundance, you see. Why you still look at those things? Look at the invisible. He fills the whole universe, you see. That's the thing. And now I'm showing you already because I know you cannot believe. That's why I come in the form of flesh. But why now you ask for the Father again? You're going backwards. <laughs> you get what I mean? And then, show us, Father, don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing His work. Verse 11, believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. We are one. Or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me, in my promise, okay, I want you to read it like that, in my promise, will do what I have been doing, he will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name. In my promise. Okay, in my name. In my promise. Same word. You see? Because my name meaning I promise you that. I state down my name. State down my life. You see? So that's my name. I chop, stamp my signature there. You see? My promise. So you pray in my name. You will get everything. You see? You see answers come. And so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Hallelujah, man. And you will do greater things, Jesus said. Because why? Because when Jesus ascended, nah, He come, you see, if you don't ascend, if you don't become invisible, I will say. When I say ascend, you feel like, oh, He leave you. No, Jesus didn't leave you. He has to become invisible. Why? If you don't become invisible, He only in Israel. You have to rush to Penang to help you. <laughs> so, become invisible, then the Holy Spirit works in every one of you, every of your fields, every of your situation. You can glorify God in your own condition and all. Hallelujah, man. This is why the Holy Spirit must be known by believers. You see? If you don't know the Holy Spirit, what is this? Abstract, abstract. Ah, don't talk about it. Don't know. Ah, don't talk. No? Just pray. That's it. You don't know what, things, what are things God telling you right here, you see? Sometimes God leave your esteem by the Holy Spirit. You see, you have to know those things. So you see, verse 15, Jesus promised the Holy Spirit, right? If you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. Then some people say, what if I don't love the Lord? <laughs> people always read this verse. And they have this doubt, you see. No. When Jesus said, if you love me, meaning what? Your mindset is in conjunction with me. Ah, because you are already children of God. A children by instinct love the Father. Sometimes you feel you don't love God. It's because you are sore, you are upset, you are angry with God or misunderstand Him. You know? But it doesn't mean you don't love God. 
I am angry with my father also, my, my earthly father, sometimes. But doesn't mean I don't love him. People talk bad things about him, I'm very angry, you know. Even though I'm angry with my father, but I don't want people to talk bad things about him. You know what I mean? I love my father, you see. You love the fatherly God, you see. So don't misunderstand yourself. You must know you already belong to him. So right now, only shift your mindset in conjunction with him. Then you will know the spirit of truth will guide you and show you. See, this is the word. If I don't explain this, huh, you, your thinking is always conditional. You come to God conditional. I don't love God, I know he won't answer. You see, you always think like that. See, I explain all these things to you. And then the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. You see, they always say, you know, that kind of thing. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. That's why sometimes you pray, you have anticipation, and later on you see the answers come. You know, he lives in you. I will not leave you as often, so I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live and you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, you are in me, and I am in you. You see, we are all together as one. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. So when you have my commands, meaning what? Command. Now, the Bible also uses this word, command. Now then, you all receive it wrongly as a command. No? When you say, if you have my command, if you have the promise mindset, the covenanted mindset, ah, that is called command. When you have understood it, you can see things in accordance with, to the promise, you will see Jesus reveal himself to you in your problems. You see? Come, let's go. Then Judas said, but Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him and will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me, who will, don't believe in me, will not obey my teaching. You see, they sneer at my words. These are the people God referring to, not you, children of God, Christians. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while I was still with you. But the Holy Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. You see? All things, huh? Not only when you read Bible, not only that. Dating, everything. Eating, enjoying, going for a tour, everything. God allows it. God wants you to enjoy life to the fullest and glorify God through it. When you teach your children, they're not eating well, they're sick, how to take care of them, all things. You see? Can I have an amen? Amen, amen huh? You know, you, amen already better experience God like that. Uh, Holy Spirit, please show me. Only people pray. Uh, Holy Spirit, show me which is the direction. This job, that job, you know, only. Uh, Holy Spirit, show me when I read the Bible. Only like that. Other than that, you keep the Holy Spirit in a box, in a fridge, close up, and then live your own lives. <laughs> you see, you're not getting anywhere. All things, okay? And He reminds you. Sometimes you don't know. Hey, He reminds you again. Haven't I I've told you before yesterday through the message? You see? Haven't I told you before through Pastor Vincent? <laughs> you see? He reminds you again. You see? And then, peace, and then when God reminds you, there will be peace, you see? Peace, the joy, the assurance in this heart. Peace I live with you, my peace I give you, I do not give you as the world gives. I, so you get the money, you're only happy for a while, but that is not the, the, the kind of peace that God gives, you see? You're joyful, very deeply in your spirit when you see God answers you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Why do God always say, do not let your hearts be troubled and all? Why do God always say that? Why must always end with that, uh, Jesus? Uh, you mean I'm going to be troubled? Man? <laughs> because in this world, you will have trouble. Because the prince of this world will come and frighten you. He cannot do anything about you, but he won't frighten you. <laughs> it's like that. Oh, you know, Time's up, you've got to go to heaven already. So frighten you. Don't want to let you do the work of God. Give you fear, give you insinuation, give you anger, so that you can pass on this anger to your spouse, to your children. <laughs> you see? These are the things. That's why, do not let your hearts be troubled when the situation doesn't seem right. I'm there. I'm taking charge, you see? So come, let's go to John 15, 7. You see, I love this verse. Let's read together. John 15, 7, verse 7. One, two, three. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask wherever you wish and it will be given you. Hallelujah, man. My words become your desire. You just wish for it and it will be given you. 
You see, when my promise becomes your perspective, it will be given you. Okay, let's go to the last scripture. Go to 1 John. 1 John at the back. 1 John at the back. Huh? 1 John chapter 3. You see, 1 John chapter 3, I'm coming here. Verse 3, uh, no, chapter 3, verse 30, 21. Come again. 1 John chapter 3, verse 21. Over right here, we're going to see uh, <coughs> what, what is it about prayer, you see? John actually covered a lot about that. John really know about the Holy Spirit, you see? That's why in the book of John, he is the apostle who lived till 90 years old, you see? In fact, no? hey, he has length of years, God leave him behind, and then he write John again, you know, he write those books again, and he remember what Jesus has told him. And now he says that all this, Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, uh, listen carefully, if our hearts do not condemn us, you know why? Your hearts always condemn you. But if our hearts don't condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from Him anything we ask because we obey His command and do what pleases Him. Not only do, and think what pleases Him. And this is His command. What is command? We always think, well, command, do what? Do what? Give money to God, wherever, serve people, love our brethren. No. To what? To believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. You see, this is the first thing. You get this right, you get everything right. And to love one another as He commanded us. How good would it be you only have what first part? You don't have second part. <laughs> no, no. You must understand that. Huh? Actually, this one goes together. When you are forgiven much, you love much. It's the same thing. You cannot love your brethren. You don't accuse yourself. Don't condemn yourself. You cannot love your brethren. Why? Because you are wounded. Sometimes I cannot love my parents so because I'm wounded. But I would not say I don't love them. Because if something happened to them, I'm upset also. You got what I mean? So actually, this thing goes together, you know. When I believe in the Lord, believe in His grace, and when I feel with His gratitude, you see, I realize I can love every one of you, no matter how unadorable <laughs> you are, you see. It always goes together. And those who obey His commands live in Him, and He in them. And this is how we know He lives in us. We know it by the Spirit He gave us. You see, that, that does not mean, uh, you see, when we always look at the Bible, we think, command this word, okay, command. We always think this is conditional. You do good, then God, God gave to you. No, no. It simply means that, you see, if your hearts don't condemn you, the key verse is this, if your hearts don't condemn. So meaning what? When you have full reconciliation with God. Why? Because your works is good? No. Because you know, He loves you unconditionally. This is the only way your hearts will not condemn you. Because at any point of time in your life, even you are like Pastor Vincent, you still do wrong. You know, sometimes you still blow your top. You know, some, even no matter how spiritual you are. So, when you, when you, what is the only way that you will not be condemned is you hold on to the identity rightly. Lord, you don't fault me. I know I, I'm weak today. But that's why you go on the cross. See, so when you have this mindset, your heart doesn't condemn you. You can face God anytime, confidently. No, even just now, you just do something bad. You can face God. God, you know, I cannot escape you, I know. But now I'm coming to you confidently because of Christ Jesus. So your conscience is clear. I'm not saying, uh, I'm not saying, I didn't do wrong, I didn't do wrong. No, 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 not that. I know I'm sinful. I know, Lord. Day and night. That's why David says, Lord, my sins are always before you. King David says that, right? My sins are always before. When he committed adultery, but he said, my sin, not only this sin, every day I'm sinning. Every day I'm worrying, I distrust you, you know, sometimes you know, I grumble, grumble, you know, complain. No, sometimes, you know, I'm, my sins are always before me, but I always see you cleanse me, you know. You saw that? So his confidence is not based on his works. Or, or, or rule, abide by the rule, whatever, you know, not those things, but because of Christ. And then when you have a clear conscience, you ask from God, you have this affirmation and assurance, you will receive it from Him. Amen? Ah, 
It's a bit deep, no? My message is simple, but a bit deep. You have to listen again and again. Then you understand what I'm driving at, you see? Okay, now, many believers, okay, they don't get answers. Why in their lives? Uh, never see answers when they pray. Or I will say, you receive answers, la, but your answers are inconsistent. I should say that. Sometimes you see answers, sometimes you don't. Not 100%, right? Uh, I tell you why. Because uh, you never pray according to the promise. You see, you must pray according to the promise. So you must know what did God promise. He is a God who established His covenant, His promise with His people. Okay, and He used what? He used His own life to sign it, to sign the check for you. His blood, He signed it there. If any time I break this promise, I'm not God anymore. <laughs> you, you see? This is Him. You see, He used His own life. So he, only, he died on the cross to redeem us, you know, forgive us of our sin. Not only that, dying on the cross also means, along together with it, come the promise, the covenant, that heaven and earth will fade, but this promise will not fade. Amen? So if you know this promise, huh, you know what He promised you, and you always pray according to this, Hallelujah, man, you will always receive answer. One, God promised you what? Money, is it? <laughs> he promised you He Himself. Hallelujah, man. He Himself. God Himself. Our sister Anna said eternal life. Right. You know why you have eternal life? Because God is eternal. So His eternity come into you. That's why you have eternal life. So everything in Him go into you. You saw that? So God becomes your what? He promised you He Himself. So He become your, your provision. He Himself become your reward. He Himself become your righteousness. He Himself. So He Himself. So money will not be your provision. God Himself is a provision. A good degree, a good career will not be your future. Right, Tengok? God Himself will be your future. Hallelujah, man. And Charlene, Take Hong shall not be your comforter. God will be your comforter. <laughs> because I saw Charlene touch his head. <laughs> you see? So he himself. When God becomes your comforter, it's really comfort. Infinitely. You see? Oh. If God becomes your provision, you are rich here. If money becomes your provision, huh? Then you Wow, you, you saw the money, wow, S11. Then you start to worry the next moment. When will I lose it? Huh? Hey, how to spend it? Huh? Uh, you know, then temptation will come. Oh. <laughs> Those kind of things will come, you see? But when God himself becomes yours, becomes you, in you, I tell you, everything goes right. Everything goes right. You see? Hallelujah. I mean, this is what I found it. That's why sometimes... Huh, when you pray and you don't get answer prayer, I tell you, the spiritual way to do it is, you just calm down. And then look to Him as your love and satisfaction. Enjoy His presence. Cultivate His presence. Huh? My life is you, is yours. What can be so bad when I already have eternity? You've already given me everything. So enjoy His presence and all. You see, your problem will melt away. Your worry will melt away. You see? Because He promised you He Himself. The reason why you still remain in your problem is because you didn't receive Him. You didn't need Him or ask for Him. But something else. You see? This is the thing. And I tell you, Satan, uh, Satan is someone that you cannot fight. Satan is a kind of, how I say, he's a spirit. So no form. No form. He can come in the form of frustration, come in the form of anger, anxiety, you know, loneliness sometimes. I'm going to ask you, have you experienced loneliness? Can you fight loneliness? Or? I don't want to be lonely. Don't want, don't want. <laughs> You're still lonely. <laughs> don't know why. No. I don't want to worry, but still worry. You cannot fight him, man. He's like a spiritual giant, you know, because he rules the world, you see. He's prince of this world. So you only look at the what? The king of the universe. <laughs> You look at the king of the universe, the world is so small only, ah. So, so all the problems will go. In fact, it is God himself 
who take away your fear, take away your struggle, your loneliness, but you look to him, you see? But you don't try to fight. Some people try to fight their anger. They became more angry. Am I right? So actually you look to God. Because He promised you He Himself. We always miss this part in our prayer. When you receive God Himself, you receive everything in Him. Hallelujah, man. That's why. Simple promise, huh? Don't have to complicate it. <laughs> but you have to experience it right here in your heart. And then God promised you what? In Jesus Christ. He promised you absolute, I always say absolute, I love this word, absolute guidance. Absolute guidance. You see, Jesus said, I give you the Holy Spirit. He will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I have said to you. This is John chapter 14, verse 26. Hold on to this verse. And all things will work for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. All things will work for the good. Your broken relationship will work for the good. Your failure will work for the good. Even the weaknesses, the sin that you had committed before will work for the good. So don't look at relative problems. Some people always say, you know, Lord, I cannot accept the promise because I'm still sinning. When you're still sinning, does the promise go? It doesn't. You see? Promise overwhelms the sin. You must know that first. So God draws His people with His promise first instead of looking at the sin. You see, the adultery women come to Jesus. Jesus said, right? In fact, he wasn't, he didn't, she didn't come. She's brought to Jesus. No, I don't condemn you. You go. Right? And live your life of sin and sin no more. You see? When you touch, you let go of your sin. We're given grace. You revert God. You don't want to sin. When you have bathed, you are clean already. You don't want to sin anymore. The thing is, you always think that you are still dirty. You always think you are still dirty. You don't mind. La. Still get dirty, never mind. La. Forget it. La. Since I'm dirty already. You got what I mean? This is a problem. This is a problem. I tell you, Satan is always like that. He insinuates insinuate you. He harms your esteem, you see. Satan. Absolute guidance. Absolute guidance of God. Problems, failures, wherever, you know, they are relative. Today you fail, tomorrow you can succeed. Don't worry about that, man. But the guidance and goodness of God never fail. That's why I say it's absolute. Hallelujah, man. Unchanged. Mm. Things change, but that guidance never change. I try to dwell on this more, huh? but you try to think. I want to shape your mindset. You know, go to, you know, sometimes we, because we are always making choices in our life, you see. Sometimes we, uh, must I, should I do this job or should I choose that job, you know? That kind of thing. Or this university, that university. That kind of thing. So when we choose something, say we decide to go to this company, and then after three months close down, oh, wow. <laughs> then we start to think, oh, I make wrong choice. Who say wrong choice? Who say wrong choice? That's the best choice. Because that's the absolute guidance. You learn things from there. That three months, you may learn things that you never learned in your life. You see? So this is your mindset, you've got to change. So for Christians, there's no such thing as sway. No, no sway one. No misfortune. Everything is blessings. Amen. Hallelujah, man. Because all things work for the good. If only you will be reminded and know, oh yeah, Lord, you bring me here. You don't bring me here just to fail. You bring me here for a reason. You see? Hallelujah, man. Like Elaine, you don't go to Singapore for what? One month, two months? Hallelujah, I tell you, you never get the experience in your whole life, eh? <laughs> never again. That one, two months shape your whole life. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, why don't you preach a message of God? You all must preach. I'm, I'm not, you know, when I preach like that, uh, I can really feel the fire of God. Why I preach like that? Because this is exactly the word that God wants to drive into you. You've been in misunderstanding for so long. You've been holding on to the relative things, relative problems for so long. That's why your problem doesn't go. You see? And then, what, is God pro what did God promise? In Jesus Christ, God promised answered prayer. Every, listen, every of your prayer, God listens. God answers every prayer. Okay? 
But of course, sometimes you don't hear it. But I can tell he answers every prayer. Simple. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you, right? God answers every prayer. Straightforward promise. You don't have to complicate it. Simple. Don't complicate it. God says, I answer every prayer, even when you pray without much faith. You know, sometimes, huh? Sometimes you think God will not answer because you pray like, like don't want to pray like that. <laughs> sometimes you pray so angrily. God, I tell you, huh? Sometimes you pray like that, no? God, I'm so angry with you. I pray with you, never answer. Yesterday was like, the day before was like, last week was like, I'm not praying, I'm sleeping. And I'm going to sleep. And then the next day you wake up, and you feel better. Hey, why, huh? Because God answered that prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah, man. <laughs> really? Uh, hey, I'm not joking, no. Why your love, uh? Your love, your, your meaning what? Meaning your what, newfound truth, or your thing what? Pastor Vincent exaggerating. It's true. Because I experienced this throughout my Christian life. It's just like your children now. Uh, angry with the father. My children angry with me. Then go to sleep. Oh, no. He sleep. I cannot sleep, no. <laughs> so, next day I think, no, how to make him feel good, no? <laughs> you you get me? God is like that. God is like that. He answers. <laughs> he answers every prayer. He answers. And when he, you see, why, why I have to stress this promise is very important. When you don't think like that, no. When you don't think like that, you don't think he answer prayer absolutely. You don't think like that. The next day you wake up, you don't even be bothered. You answer, answer, don't answer, answer, heck care. And when you have this attitude, right, you don't look for his answers. Even when he answers you. And right, even though he uplifts you in the morning, you're still sour. You don't care. Uplift, uplift, long. You get what I mean? You don't even think it's, it comes from him. You see, so Satan is like that. He directs your perspective away from God. Good things happen to you. Wow, you're hanging. Good, lucky, or whatever, you know. Oh, you have a good life there. Bad things happen. You see, God didn't bless you. <laughs> he will say that. Satan is like that. You saw that? He answers every prayer. And I know many of you learn about prayers. I answer prayer. When I say, I answer prayer. Oh, yes. Wait. Uh, no, sometimes God. Uh, okay, lah. This is knowledge. I know. You all learned this already. I give you higher level one. Yes, wait, no. Everyone knows. Sometimes he yes, sometimes he say wait, later on, sometimes no. We don't, in fact, uh, we get very upset when God says no. And I can tell you, uh, many a times you guys didn't even realize. When God says no, he don't just slap you with a no. He takes great pains to explain to you why no. And he keep telling you what is the underlying blessings behind why no. You cannot accept it. Never mind. God retreat. Then come back to you. I tell you why no. <laughs> why I don't give you. Why I don't give you that thing that you want. That need that you want. Why no. You see God give you time. And give you space. God is like that. That's why when God explained it to me. Uh, why no. That I begin to mature. In understanding of him. My relationship with him built up. You see. God is such a loving and gentle God. Don't make him to be a judge. He's not a judge. He's a father. Amen? Uh, so, bottom line is, God wants you to know he answers prayer absolutely. Absolutely. And the worst thing you can think about God is he don't care about your prayer. See, don't ever think that. No matter how weak you pray, even you pray without any faith, God answers that. Later I'll tell you how to see the promise, okay? No, verse 4 uh, and 4. What is the promise? There's five promises altogether, okay? That's why every promise, uh, I dwell on it and make sure I put that mindset in you. You see, God wants to make sure. Everyone receive grace, okay? What is the fourth promise? God says, God says what? Mm, don't let your hearts be troubled, right? God always say that kind of thing. Is trouble going to come? Don't worry. <laughs> don't let your hearts be troubled. Because God says what? I'll give you the power, authority, and there will always be enough grace for you to overcome, hallelujah, overcome your trials and even your temptations, you see? 
there will be enough power. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. When Jesus overcome the world, oh, Jesus, you overcome, I know. How about me? Jesus is in you now. <laughs> so, He gave you the strength, the power to overcome. You see, God didn't promise a smooth sailing, a problem-free life. But God promised enough strength. In fact, overwhelming strength given us to overcome. You know why God has to allow... I mean, God didn't give us tribulation, but God allowed it. I mean, God is... When, when Job suffered, God suffered also. You must know. But, um, you see, but why God allow if He's such a loving God? People say, why God allow pain, sufferings, you know? You see, you are not... You are caught for an eternal purpose. You are caught to, to receive eternal crown. So there must be meaningful battles in your life. There must be meaningful battles. You realize that? You live a carefree life, everything smooth sailing, everything okay, you know? I don't care, you know? No need to evangelize, no need to whatever, you know, just peaceful in my family. You go up heaven, you see, uh, look here, atap <laughs> tua. Atap tua. Atap tua mabo. No crown. <laughs> you get what I mean or not? God wouldn't allow a trial that makes you worse off. Okay? He wouldn't allow a trial to make you worse off. Now, you have to be absolutely clear. Okay? You already have eternity. So, you see, if God loves you, <clears throat> God loves you to a point that He can give eternity, give His whole life to you. You think God will keep allowing you to be suppressed under your problem? Cannot be. God will give you enough power. In fact, uh, that trial come, that temptation come, uh, people only say, oh, escape from temptation. No. Each time you, you overcome that temptation, you overcome that trial, whether within you or outside you, sometimes you overcome it within. You are very angry or, or very, feeling very lousy today, but you overcome it through prayer, I tell you, that is your crown. That becomes your crown. You see? God knows. The angels know everything. You have fought the battle. Small better, big better is better. Meaningful betters in your life to give you that crown. You see? That's how I want to give you this verse, okay? The real, uh, John, not John, 1 Peter verse five, uh, no, chapter 5, verse 10. The God of all grace who called you to His eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will Himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Hallelujah, man. You see? Your real problem is what? No, no. Your real problem is not your problem. That problem you are facing, your trouble, is you think wrongly about God. You think wrongly about God. Lord. Why? Why me? Why am I suffer? You know, you see? I tell you, any one of you is suffering now or whatever, you know, oh, I tell you, God is giving you grace and God is giving you crown. And even when you when you cannot do anything about your problem, you keep attending meetings. I tell you, even if you attend meetings because you feel lousy, you cannot overcome your problem, you feel defeated, you keep coming for meeting. Uh, this is your crown, you know. Because you are dealing with it. You deal with it, you see. And God give you enough power, grace to overcome it. I tell you why. God, okay, I'm going to dwell on this one a lot. Okay. I want to, I want to tell you that why, huh? God give you this promise. God give you the promise. Power and authority comes from God. God give you that. Why? Because He know it's not going to be easy in this world. It's not going to be easy. And not easy where? Not easy here. Not your problem. Not your external problem. Not easy here. I give you an example. You know the economy crisis? Over already not for Malaysia. Not yet. <laughs> but I tell you, huh? I tell you, not a problem. Not a problem, no. I tell you, the problem is not an economic crisis because if you have look at past decade, huh? economic crisis always come. Huh? You look at this decade from the dot-com, the SARS, wherever, you know, until now. Or the bubble burst, wherever, and until now. The market will always correct itself. <laughs> it will come back again. But what is the problem? Your fear. You have a lot of fear. You realize that? 
When the market crashes, everyone fear, everyone panic, everyone struggle, rush to sell their property, sell their shares, you know, and they lose more money. You realize that? Because it's the fear that drives, it, drives people to do that, you see? See, when you fear, you lose all judgment. That's why God keeps telling you, Jesus keeps saying, don't lose heart. You know, don't give, your, give in to trouble, you know, don't be worried about the trouble, you see? Don't fear. fear. When you fear, you lose the judgment, you see? You cannot perform in your work. You cannot study well because of that fear. You fear you will fail again, you see? Mm. Ask my pianist, uh, Helen. My Helen is a wonderful pianist. I ask you, see, if there's a better pianist sit here, when you play the piano, you got pressure. Nah? <laughs> now because you are the best, no fear. Hallelujah, man, everything natural. Wow, a few professional come ready. Huh? Wow, your fingers stiff ready. <laughs> That's what my pianist told me. <laughs> my pianist always say, Wow, oh, Pastor, <laughs> she's the best ready. I didn't find any pianist better than her. But he say, if a professional sit down there, huh? wow, stiff ready, you know? It's like that. This is the kind of fear. You see? That's why Jesus always say, You are the best ready. Because I'm with you. You, you see? Huh. So, I give you one way to overcome your problem. In fact, this, when, when I say this is a promise, it means no condition attached. Even sometimes you are so weak, at your low point of your faith, you don't feel like praying, would God still give you strength or not? Grace? Yes, definitely. So, but the thing is your conscience. You keep pricking your conscience. Lord, I didn't pray. You know? I remain, I let myself remain like that. I tell you, I give you a, a way to overcome this. When you're so down, you cannot pray, cannot do anything, what do you do? Just eat, sleep, and live. <laughs> Serious? Eat, sleep, and live. When Elijah was so down, did God demand from him? No, 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 Elijah, sleep, sleep. The angels come, wake up, wake up, eat, eat. Sleep, sleep. <laughs> and then go. And God will speak to you, oh, right? Hallelujah, man, we have a great God, you see? So when I say promise, it's like that. But you only be conscious, yeah, when I eat, I make sure I know. God tell me to eat, sleep, okay, I know. So hang on, hang on there, don't hang yourself. <laughs> hang on, eat and sleep and hang on. And then the problem will go. You see, God is like that. When you are so down, God doesn't demand from you anymore. God just wants you to eat, sleep and live. <laughs> and then the grace will come again, lift you up. Then you praise the Lord. Lord, I know. You're such a great God. I know. You see, even Pastor Vincent do that, no? Because I have a lot of problems in my life, no? When you are a pastor, huh? every day people come to you with the problems. <laughs> then, then you absorb all the problems in you. And especially when you love your brethren so much, you absorb it so much, you know. It's just that you love your son. If my son had a problem, you got a problem or not? No problem. But if you have a problem, you cannot sleep, right? But if I treat my, my sheep as my children, you see, it's very painful when I see they are in pain. So how? Sometimes this is so no good, that is so no good, everything no good. Eat, sleep, and live. <laughs> then God will deliver. Lord, you know, uh, you know. I'm drained already, you know. <laughs> okay, I just sleep, and then God works. You see? This, that's why I say it's a promise. It's a promise. It doesn't depend on your works. Oh, my willpower, I get up. If you have the strength, okay, you get up and pray. No strength, you just relax in the Lord, you see? This is the way, you, because we are fighting a spiritual battle. You cannot be always in tip-top condition all your life, you see? So, hold on to promise. This is what Christian belief is all about. Hey, you all know this or not? Huh? Oh, you have been in church for so long. You should know this. This is what, Dominic? Basic message. <laughs> no joke, man. <laughs> no joke. Basic message, okay? And then God promised us, saying what? <laughs> All people and nations. Wow, hallelujah, man. Does this sound too great? No. All people and nations will be blessed through who? Me. Me, Jesus in you now. So we'll be blessed through you. So this is the promise given to Abraham, you see? When he's even childless, you'll be the father of all nations. Am I right? 
God told the pathetic fishermen, go and make disciples of all nations. He says, even when they're doubtful, you see, go, baptize them in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, you'll be my witness da, 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 to the ends of the world. <laughs> right? God says that to them when they're still doubtful. Oh, is it? Is it? Lord, you sure you resurrect already? <laughs> go! <laughs> so, you are already blessed. You will be. You see, will be. When you see it, you will be. Then you say, Where God? I don't see what. Where God? Where God? In heaven. Ah. <laughs> Where God? I don't see. Leh. I'm only a housewife. I don't see. Oh. Well, Penang Church, only 13, 14 people. You know. Where God? If God shows you where God, ah, you're in heaven already. <laughs> it, you know, it, no, no, I'm really saying it's true. Because you're always looking at where God. But God says you believe it absolutely first. Because Abraham believed it when he's childless. Believe it. You take hold of it. You say, take hold of it. Believe it. Sometimes you can't believe it. Just hold on to it, Lord. This is still a fact. I know. It will happen someday. You believe it. Even if you cannot see it, you see? Right now. So when you believe it, you can sit on earth. And then God, Abraham saw Isaac. You see? Let this become your belief. What I'm saying is, let this become your belief. That's why Joshua and Caleb believe it. They hold on to it. The land of Canaan is ours. Is ours. For the Israel. Everyone don't believe. Okay lah. I let your rest in the wilderness. Rest. Really rest. Rest eternally. <laughs> so rest. I know. God is not killing them, no. They really rested. <laughs> rested with their fathers, you know. But Joshua and Caleb, 80 years old, 85 years old, come, come, two of you, go to the land of Canaan. Lead my people. And then they saw the fruits, the glory, the prosperous Canaan given to them. You see? The inheritance. They received everything. They tasted everything while they're still living. Hallelujah, man. All nations will be blessed through you. You got to believe this, okay? In fact, you cannot believe. That's why God gave you Sarah, Pastor Sarah. You look at her. Look at her. If God can use every of her past and even become a pastor now, why can't you? You get what I mean? You don't reduce the standard of God. Even when you are weak, God still bless you and use you. You see, if only you can... Some people always think, oh, I'm successful already. I can hold my head high. Then, you know, I can see the Lord use me. Then you have cheapened the grace of God. Because I can tell you, every Christian messed up their life in one way or another. Some messed up their marriage, some messed up their career. You see, if you only wait until, wow, you're somebody only, huh, then God can use you. That's not grace anymore. That's not the gospel. God used Peter while he was a fisherman. You see, still pathetic, still, still doubtful. You know, God still uses him. And God even used him about the fact that he denied the Lord three times. That's why all the four Gospels wrote about it. I presume Peter must have told everyone, you know, I denied the Lord. I denied one or once, twice, three times and I denied the Lord. You see? Hallelujah. He, how gracious he is. You see? That's why every apostle right now, this record, you see, he denied the Lord. You see? Not because of his own righteousness. But God has chosen him to use him. You see? Put this in your mind. This is the promise of God. Hallelujah, man. And where are we now? <laughs> My message always have how many points? No. Let's come to this. Let's remain here. <laughs> now, when we talk about promise, we always talk about faith in the promise. Yeah. Faith in the promise, important or not? Yes, faith helps you see this promise. Faith. Am I right? So, when we talk about faith in Christian living, we are not talking about blind faith or you believe in what you want to believe, but you believe in what? You have faith in this promise that He has given you. So the ancient people, Abraham, Moses, the Patriarch, you know, David, they all hold on to this. You see? They were all commended for their faith. All commended. So faith is what? What's the definition of faith? Faith is being sure. It's being sure of what? This absolute truth. Okay? And then being convinced that the blessing of this absolute truth always hold. Always hold. Even when you are weak, it always hold. Faith is it. The definition. In fact, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, I'm talking about that. So, 
So faith, faith cannot say, faith is a mystery. Like. You cannot say, no, I believe this will happen. I believe this, uh, this is fortune telling. No. Uh, tomorrow, uh, you step on the drain and you fall. <laughs> it's fortune telling. No. Faith is, the basis of faith is this promise. Uh, my children, I look at them with this promise. My problem, I look at them with this promise. You see, faith in this and the blessings of this promise always hold. You see, heaven and earth change, but God doesn't leave you. God will definitely answer your prayer. If only one answer He doesn't answer, one answer He doesn't give you when you pray, He's not God anymore. You see, God is so serious about it. His signature is here in the promise. That's why we call it the promise, the covenant of God. You see, God is such a great God. So now I want to teach you at the end of it, at the end of this lesson, anyone can you see red color? <laughs> Red color. So now I'm coming to the end. How to pray with these promises? Ah, how? I'm talking about the what? The how part, meaning the methodology. The methodology. How to have these promises in your prayer? How to use these promises to uplift your spirit, to drive away your anxiety, uh, to bring in the finance even? Sometimes, yeah. To overcome your interpersonal relationship problem, you know, how? How? Mm. If you don't know how to use it, uh, theory is still theory, right? Head knowledge. Until you know how to use it, then it becomes real. This is the part, okay? That's why you find it strange. A lot of Christians, I don't know why, they go to church, they learn about the Bible, they always quarrel in their family, you know? They're always lacking in their, in their finances, you know? Because why? They know how to use it. They don't know how to use it. You see, I write over here, you see, the effect of the word, huh? the effect of this promise is only manifested when it enters your heart. If it remains here at the head, it's not going to work. That's why the word, the word, we call it the word, and the spirit always goes together. Right? Always goes together. That's why prayer is for, you see. I give you an example. You try to listen up. Uh, listen up. When you say, God is with me, his abundance is with me. You know. By just knowing and, listen up, when you feel happy that God is your abundance, God is your God, God is with you. When you feel happy, the feel happy, feel contented when He's your abundance will cause the angels to work. Just knowing He's your abundance doesn't work. Okay? I say that again. You see? If you only know Jesus is your righteousness, no meaning. No meaning, nothing will happen. But you see, huh? you see, listen up. When reproaches keep coming, criticism come, people scold you, criticize you, but you think of Jesus is your righteousness. And you can overcome those reproaches. And even when people criticize you, you can tell God, Lord, I know, people criticize me, you will give me more grace. I can feel it. Feel it, it will come. This is called the Spirit. So everything must go through the Spirit. Oh, no feeling, only no. That's why Christianity is so dull for many people. Because they don't feel it here. You see? So the effect of the prayer is here. How to have these promises in your heart. So I teach you how to pray with these promises. The first one is, listen up. My first point is always the most important. The first point is, how to pray with these promises. See. Yes. Keep seeing. <laughs> Say, keep seeing. Keep seeing. It's about keep seeing. <laughs> you understand what I'm trying to say? Because these promises are already fulfilled. Like, just know what I say. Even if you don't pray, God will still guide you. God will still answer your prayer. You groan and moan, complain. Tomorrow you feel better. You see, God will still do it. But God wants you to see. Ah, seeing. See is the whole thing. You see, you get what I mean. You see, Jesus, when Jesus trained his, trained his disciples, he's always talking about seeing. God didn't tell them, pray, 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 pray. God didn't say so much about prayer. But God always says, the Lord always says, see, see how the lilies grow. 
See how the birds, the father feeds the sparrow. So don't worry. <laughs> see. You see? A lot of times, God keeps saying, See, I have told you ahead of time, so that you may believe when the problem comes. You see? See. See, the sheep of God, they're helpless and harassed. You see? See, the harvest is ripe. See. So when you see already, you, you find compassion for people. See, you see? It's always about seeing. I love this word, see. I have a blog, huh? <laughs> you know? I wrote about this. Keep seeing. And when God sent the disciples to the end of, ends of the world, and see, I am with you always to the end of the age. And lo, and see, I'm with you. And blessed are your eyes because they see. <laughs> it's always there. But some people don't see. <laughs> but you see. <laughs> you see? The problem is always there. You see it. Why? When you see it, your faith increases. You see? Your faith increases from seeing. That's why Jesus never said pray, praying. Because when I say prayer, pray is very ritual. 6 a.m. in the morning, 8 a.m., you know, fix some prayer on a fix some. No. I mean, fix some prayer is important. But God does not just tell you to do fix some prayer. God asks you to see. See it in fix some prayer. Uh, see. So you keep seeing. Uh, when you begin to see God is working, you are actually praying at the same time. You get what I mean? Today I was telling Norman about this, right? See, huh? That's why I see. So, who, who should see? Christine? See. God provides the help university. See. He provides the finance. See. <laughs> provide the friends. See. He provides this, that, everything. See. Not enough? Never mind. I'll let you see more. <laughs> you still see. Provide the church for you. Now you come back to give you the edification. God provide Pastor Vincent for you, but see, okay? <laughs> Make sure you see, huh? Make sure you see. You know, church, a lot of times, huh? you know, in many churches, now I've grown up in church, 22 years in church, okay, I know. Preachers always say, you must have faith. Have faith. Pastor, no faith. Must have faith. No faith. Must try to have faith, you know? <laughs> so, how do you have faith? Faith is not... It's not something that, because you're not happy now, you're telling you you're, you don't have faith. Faith cannot be forced. I can force you to do housework for me. The husband can force the, or the wife can force the husband to do housework. Force you. Okay, do, do, do. But faith cannot force one. You're not happy means not happy. You cannot try to have faith. Am I right? So Jesus said, see my disciples. See the harvest is right. Blessed are your eyes that see. You see, you saw Satan fall like lightning. Blessed are you. You see? You saw that? You see how great our authority is? You see, Jesus is telling the disciples those things about seeing. When you see, you are actually praying. You see, everyone see. So I see, Charlene. <laughs> see what? God provides such a loving, understanding boyfriend for you. <laughs> because God knows your need. Because God knows your need. You need the love. But the problem, not the problem, but the important thing is, you must see. <laughs> you don't see nothing. <laughs> so Mirel, see the bulletin you are doing every week. It's a channel. <laughs> it's a channel, you see. You link up all the live churches and see how God protected you a lot of times. Protected your feelings. But you don't even know how you feel. <laughs> A lot of things are huh? see. I just confirm with you. <laughs> Anyone else need to see? <laughs> Jeremy, see. Go bring the waterfall here for you. <laughs> and next time, because he loves to play, he has a lot of energy, need to expel the energy. You see? Yeah. Because he's a fellow is good in sport. Sports, you see? See. Next time God bring the stadium here for you. <laughs> You see, today he's playing ping pong. Wow, wonderful, man. You see, he picks up things very fast, you see. Sports. He has a lot of ball sense, you see. But you must see. You don't see, you see. Nothing good about me. <laughs> you see? You always think like that. So everyone see, huh? Norman, you want to see? See? God closed one door to open a greater door. See? Many doors. Many doors. <laughs> Hallelujah. Make sure you see, huh? Keep. But the thing is, must keep seeing. You cannot see for one day only. 
<laughs> you must keep seeing throughout your life. In fact, always remember, I drive this to you when you see you are praying. You see? That's why people ask me, Pastor, pray, I can pray in the toilet, not? <laughs> pray, must close eyes, not? What are you talking about? Different dimension. I'm talking about seeing. You know. Seeing is praying already. You are talking to me about the richer part. God is not interested in that. God is interested in your spirit. When you see your spirit uplifted, yeah, this is the thing that you're communicating with God through that, you see. Prayer is like that. Okay, I, uh, you know, this one is, uh, I have to break all your misunderstanding. So, Christian living is very lively. Man. Sometimes, uh, Pastor Vincent, uh, when the food comes, forgot to pray or so <laughs> I see the food. Wow. Wonderful God. Thank man. Thank you, man. No time to pray. Just eat. <laughs> see. <laughs> okay. And then, um, number two. And then, how to pray with the promise. You see, promise must be seen. You see? What I'm trying to say is that the more you see, the more relevant the promise becomes. The more real it becomes. And you keep seeing, you see more. You see? And then, number two is, how to pray with the promise? That is, you have to confirm. I always like to use the word confirm. Confirm more than ask. Of course, you ask at times. But I, I would like you to confirm the promise of God. You see, a lot of believers always ask. And you ask the wrong thing. Make sure you ask the right thing. You ask the wrong thing. Lord, be with me. Lord, answer me. Be with me. Tomorrow come again. Why, Lord? You never be with me. Be with me. The Lord says, I'm here already. <laughs> the Lord says, I'm already with you. What do you want? <laughs> you get what I mean? Because you can pray. You pray for the things that God already given you. What can God do? I'm ready here. <laughs> what can I do? You see? So the thing is about this promise is you must you must confirm. Keep confirming, you see, when you fall into sin, when you get angry, lustful thoughts, jealous heart overwhelm you. you know, I don't use to say, God, forgive me, forgive me. Actually, God already forgiven you in Jesus Christ. He himself given you what? So, your prayer is about confirming, Lord, when you go to God, Lord, I know I've sinned, but I thank you for your grace. I know my sin is always before you, and I thank you. Now I know, even deeply, how, why you go to the cross to die for me? Thank you, Lord. And I'm gracious to you. You see? This is confession. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Why I don't feel here? Forgive. Forgive. God already forgiven. And you keep praying like that, huh? Every day you're confessing. I've seen some believers every day. Day and night they confess this, confess that. Satan knows. Satan, ha ha. This fellow is not a shirt. Satan knows. <laughs> Then you play with him, the toy with his feeling. Satan knows you're not assured of God Himself has forgiven you. He is your righteousness. You're not assured of that. That's why you keep babbling like pagans, even when confession and all, you see? You're not confirming. You're asking for things that God already given you. You see? If things doesn't go your way, you see? If things doesn't go your way, Lord, I know. I know, Lord, this is not your guidance. So you close this door, Lord. You show me the other door. Confirm. I know this is not your way. Confirm. See, you know what I mean? Now? You confirm meaning you hold on to the promise and confirm it. Yes, I know. Since you guide me this way, I know. That is not the guidance. That is not the path you want me to take. So, Lord, open the other way. You see, Christian living is like that. Open mind. You confirm it. Rather than you keep asking and asking and then you don't receive answer. You see, you keep asking. You don't get answer. You get so disheartened, right? You see, that's the thing. Okay, very quickly, huh? Mm. Oh, you see, what I'm trying to say is, uh, when you don't confirm the Word of God, when you keep asking for things that God already given you, your spirit works differently. Your spirit works differently. Oh. You are not focusing on what God is doing. When you keep focusing on what you don't have. You see? So, you keep asking the same. No, confirm it. Confirm. And then, number three, I want to say, you learn to utter. Uh, this is the thing I want to teach you now. Uh. Learn to utter and proclaim the promises of God. Utter, meaning use your mouth. Use your mouth. Listen up. You utter the word of God. 
proclaim the promise of God in our daily lives. You know why? Romans chapter 10 verse 10. Heart belief, when your heart believes, your mouth will confess. Listen up. This is very important. Listen up. Huh? I'm not, I don't mean to say, oh, this is like a spell. Oh, you, this spell, you just say it out, say it out, then God will be moved. No, not that. You utter for what? You utter for who? For yourself, not for God. You know why? Because when you utter it, you strengthen your heart. You utter it. Because sometimes I tell you, let's be frank, we are living in flesh. And the spiritual realm, this is a fallen spiritual realm. Satan's still there with his army. And then we are in flesh. So when you're in flesh, sometimes you can, you'll be weak, you'll be tired, you'll be affected by people's words, you see, criticism and all. Even you look at your children or sometimes your family members, they give you problems, oh, lose heart again, you see. So you, you are still in flesh, so you tend to lose faith easily. Okay? You're driven more by your naked eye, naked ear, you know, you hear things, you know, unpleasant things. Like Pastor Vincent also, lah. sometimes at home, no. People call, people email, you know, all problems one, you know. people don't tell pastor good things, only bad things, you know. <laughs> good things they just keep quiet, bad things they come. <laughs> so, you receive a lot of negative spirit, you see, negative spirit, so, but you know that negative spirit is no good. So you utter, Lord, I'm blessed, I'm loved. When people criticize you, Lord, you are my righteous, I'm imperfect, but you are my righteous, you utter it out, and then you listen to what you have uttered. You strengthen your heart, strengthen your spirit. Then you can stand before God. Sometimes when I get so worried about CLCP, you know, no, I don't know because I'm not with you. I'm in Singapore. I don't know how are you. you know, y'all don't give me information. I also don't know well, you all survive or not. But I always utter to the Lord, Lord, this is your church. This is your glory, your baby, right? So you take care of them. CLCP is your glory. So utter it out, and then you find strength. You see, you hear it and you find strength in your spirit. When your spirit is uplifted, the angels move. So that's the thing about uttering. You look at the, all the, uh, the, the patriarch, patriarch. They are people, uh, David, Moses, uh, especially David, Abraham, David, especially. You look at the psalm, raise his hand to the Lord, proclaim the promises of God. He always does that. He always does that. Why? He sings and dances to the Lord. He always does that. Why? Because he knows. You know, because sometimes he feels so negative. The enemy is coming for him. Saul wants to kill him. You see, that's a, he got to utter the promise. The Lord is my shepherd. I should not be in one. You see, he wrote that out. He sing that out. You see, to elevate him. Elevate his spirit. So, church, nothing wrong. Raise your hand and sing. Praise the Lord. Say, Amen. 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 Yeah, when you respond with Amen, you are receiving the word. The word take root here. You see? I tell you, it's not a spell. I'm not saying, some people say, uh, like the monk like that. God is in me, absolutely God is in me, I'm answer prayer. <laughs> no, 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 not that. Even tongues, uh, careful. Don't learn it. Meditation like that, no. God is not saying, God is not interested in those things, you see? So we say, pray in our mind. Paul say, pray in our mind, pray in our spirit also. When you utter the word of God, you utter it, the promise of God, the promise, you hear it again, strengthen your heart. This is the thing God wants. You see? You want to be strengthened. Learn to utter the word of God. Mm. Sometimes I quarrel with my wife. <laughs> so, uh, so angry, you know. Throw poison words at one another. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, get it, man. I'm not going to care. Uh, close the door. <laughs> wow, this feels so bad. Lord, I know you love me. <laughs> and you love her too. <laughs> Yeah, you see, after the word of God, Lord, I'm righteous, I know. Lord, I'm righteous before you, right? Lord, you are my righteous, you are my right. I say that, see, so I don't get condemned, you see? Or else Satan will come and tell me, hey, peng you up, this is pastor there. You pastor, you preach, I never do. Uh. <laughs> you see, every time Satan will say this kind of thing, you know how hard to be a pastor, no? because you preach a perfect word of God, but you're not perfect, you know? So sometimes uh, your children or what, your spouse come and accuse you and make you feel bad. So, you proclaim to the Lord, Lord, I'm righteous. I'm a sinner of sinner. I'm righteous because of you. Hallelujah, man. And then, you see, you get elevated. Lord, you understand me. I'm blessed. 
because I'm a child. I'm favored because I'm a child, not because I do well. Hallelujah. Just you utter the word of God and then strengthen yourself. Amen. Wow. I'm teaching you all the spiritual truths, you know. This is the way to get a promise into your heart. And then that's where God will work, you see. And when you learn to utter the word of God, mm, and listen up, and then you bring the word, you bring the promise of God. Now, the promise of God is living. Okay, you don't just pray in your room only. You bring it into your daily living. Especially, listen up, your interpersonal relationships mm. with people that you live with, you are close to, you know. Don't for a moment doubt God's faithfulness. Promise. People who live with God don't give you nuisance in your life. <laughs> listen, God don't give you nuisance. For every person that appear in your life, they are your blessings. Because if you are blessed, every person that come into your life, even your enemy, even Saul when he wanted to kill David, actually Saul became his blessings. Am I right? Because Saul, in the event of doing that, God removed him and then raised David up. You saw that? And David humbled down. He humbled even more because of the tribulation. And he's, he's seeing all the psalms, you know, when he's fearful. And now, oh, you see, these are psalms that we are reading now. You saw that? You see. In my life, you know, we serve in a church, you know. All kinds of people we met. We met co-workers, really people who, we really cherish the relationship and all. But sometimes, friends become foes or so. Really. You started this church or so, you know. Sometimes people don't understand, they criticize you. When we started our church, we don't criticize us or so. We don't criticize my teaching. Hey, Pastor Vincent, you sure you're teaching the right things? <laughs> but I look to the Lord, Lord, for those things that they say, let it come to me so that you see it, you will give me more grace and favor. And that's why anointing come to me and the numbers come to my church, you see? Because every criticism brings their blessings. Because I claim it. I claim it like that. So, listen up, huh? Ah, even enemies are your blessings. No matter how wounded you are by people around you, because of the promise of God, your daily living, everyone that you met, even the children that you're so disappointed with, I tell you, they are here for a great reason, man. Amen? Can you say that? Amen, Amen huh? So, if people bless you, I'm talking about relationship now. If people bless you, you take it in. You know, Pai Sei, Pai Sei. Ah, we Chinese are Pai Sei. No, la, I'm not that good. <laughs> Joel was telling me yesterday. No, you claim it. Why? You claim it because of Jesus Christ. I'm favored in Jesus Christ. People say, yeah, pretty Christine. Sorry, I'm the prettiest. <laughs> take it, take it. You're smart. Take it. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. And you take it in. See, people don't understand, you don't say, oh, praise Jesus. See how it's going. If they can understand, okay, yeah, praise the Lord. You just say that, you know. If Christian bless you, praise the Lord. People praise me also. I take it in. Because you, when you're taking, you're taking the blessings of people. Because when people bless you, they're blessing you with their spirit. You take it in and the blessings will come. People criticize you, like what I say, you know. Take in the grace of God. Okay? Let the criticism come so that God will give me more grace. You see, this is the way, this is the attitude you react to it. So if good things happen to you, you don't say what? Wow, hang, I'm lucky, man. There's no such thing as luck. Okay. A pastor said luck comes from what? The word luck comes from what? L-U-C? Lucifer. <laughs> Come from Lucifer, no? You better be careful when you say lucky, no? You are what? Blessed. Ah, because there's someone who bless you. Someone who bless you. So misfortune things happen, misfortunate things happen, not sway, okay? Never sway. All things work for the good. Lord, misfortune things, I claim even more grace. Alright? So this is very simple, you see? Very simple, but your daily living, you tend to forget because you get sucked into the problem. You get sucked into the situation, you see? But relationship, especially God wants to bless you with it. I'm coming to the end, huh? I'm coming. Uh. See, yes. That's why Jesus said, if you have, if you have 
faith like a master seed as small wow the other time uh, you know last time when i read this verse i say jesus you're exaggerating master seed what is this can't even see you know master seed so small you can move mountain so what is jesus trying to say meaning what you know if you have such a small faith in the right fundamentals the right promise it will come but you always believe the wrong things you have faith in the wrong things that's why no matter how much you want to believe and it won't happen you see that is the thing you understand what Jesus say now this is the whole idea about how to pray with these promises simple straightforward you know take it in pray with the spirit and then you see it you receive it and then the last part is and always remember huh? the last part is it always start with the promise and end with the promise so after you receive the blessings and goodness of the promise let it come back and strengthen strengthen your assurance or strengthen your faith in the promise of God you understand what I mean it must come back to the promise you don't just get happy happy oh, our answers come happy happy you know money come job come you know oh uh, no you let it come back come back Lord now I'm happy because of you I'm happy because of our promise thank you Lord so you strengthen so strengthen your faith in the promise so Lord I know if you can deliver me this time I know for the rest of my life I'm even more assured Lord this promise will never never ever change hallelujah man so you strengthen your assurance in the promise come back to the promise test with the promise claim the promise and come back and let it strengthen the promise you see this is all about Christian living that's why I say prayer and promise together are you praying rightly everyone <laughs> yes sir hallelujah no never mind start praying rightly with the promise of Jesus Christ amen yeah, let's pray thank you Lord for giving us this precious moment that we learn about your promise we know every word that you speak forth from your servant there are words of truth there are words of covenant that you have given to your people in Christ Jesus not one word will fall away not one word will pass heaven and earth will pass away every word of yours will be fulfilled Lord, and I know you want every one of us to experience your promise realistically re relevantly Lord. and not one of your promise will fall to the ground and Lord we thank you for that and from today onwards Lord teach us teach us your promise Lord change our mindset and let us come to you with the right attitude with the right mindset we want to see you in our lives we want to see a living and active God working in our lives we want a living and active Christian living Lord thank you so much for giving us the words in Jesus Christ's name we pray Amen, Amen. Hallelujah.